Hey everyone, it's me, Mass Walrus9, back with another episode of Walrus's TCG Dailies. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm here to present to you a deck I just finished making up. Didn't even have time to test it, so I'm hoping it plays out well and you enjoy it. It's going to be Garchomp EX. So let's take a look at actually what is happening in this deck. I'm pairing Garchomp EX with two big cards. Those being Pidgeot EX and the Altaria from Evolving Skies. This is because they all have a common trait in com or they all have a common trait. That is, they share no retreat cost. This makes them a huge target for the card Fetterball, meaning that I can hit them for nothing at all. Really. We'll use Pidgeot EX Quick Search to search for a card to our hand. Altaria allows us to search for a supporter to our hand. We're also pairing up with Squawkabilly EX as a good turn one opener. Regirock and Paldea Tauros are also there in order to protect against Electric. Since we're going to have a double weakness to Electric, and Electric's a decently common deck, this tends to be more of a threat. Using the Guard Chomp, though, we're able to ramp up some energy fairly well. This allows us to attach three basic fighting energy cards from our discard pile to your bench Pokemon any way you like for 160. That's pretty good. I also have no complaints with that. And I can discard two, psych two energy of any type to do a 120 ping. It could be directly to the front, or it could be to the bench which is a good way to pick off any Pokemon that are straggling. So I can use the Hydro Lander to set up a card like Regirock or Paldean Tauros that have pretty good damage, 130 and 140. I usually consider about 280 to be the threshold for a deck like that. Paldean Tauros will be nice for the smaller stragglers, and I don't think we're going to really have to worry too much about anything to 280 range that's electric. So yeah. The only issues with the deck is that the power isn't the strongest. In a meta where you can insta-kill or get a typical 220, heading a, a 160 isn't great. But it's got an interesting mechanic. Pairing with this, I just ran a bunch of stuff. There's the Rare Candy, Battle VIP Pass, Arvin's going to be huge in this setup, Tool Jammer, uh... Choice Belt and TM Evolution are my toy choices for tools. Tool Jammer specifically because tools are a lot more common with the Ancient and Future Pokemon. Running like three bosses orders, two Ionos, and a single Turo to pair with the Arvins. I could potentially remove them for consistency stake. Add some more supporters to allow for whatever or Palpat to recycle my supporters. But I think it's honestly alright. And I'm only running nine fighting energy which is a decent amount from my perspective. Again, I haven't tried this out. I'm looking forward to getting a game with it. So let's boot up into some ranked. Playing against Shino Isola. Shino Isola. Psychic, Psychic, Psychic. Curious in what they're playing. God of War EX would be my first prediction. I mean, it's not the only Psychic deck around, but it kind of is the best Psychic deck you're going to really see. You see a high percentage of people playing Gardevoir EX, and I said it in the past, but I believe it's for two reasons. Uh, first off, you're going to see a lot of people playing the deck due to factors such as cost. It's a relatively cheap deck, all things considered, but... You're also going to see the deck because it's good, it's consistent, it's fast. Uh, opening's tough, but we got a pretty good hand. Uh, yeah, this, this is a tough one to check out on. We can't TM Evolve, so it's not really worth it at this point. Okay, so it's Cosmog, so they're doing Bench Spread. The Altaria is nice. I think what I'm going to do, because this doesn't help us out that much, 
is I'm going to dump the super rod and the evolution in order to pick up a gibble, just get that going. And we're going to end turn. And I think, depending on what the draw is, we're going to Ultra Ball away Ataria and what I draw to pick up a Pidgeot EX. This is going to allow us to search our deck for an Altaria and we'll evolve into Swablu into which we den Iono and hopefully get a good pull. Unfortunate with the miss on our opening hand. Gets the Psychic Energy. You know, we didn't get any of our Battle VIP pass or our uh, Squawk Billy, but uh, it is a good opening. I think they threw Tails. Boss's orders dump is unfortunate, but that's going to be what happens. Pick up uh, the Pidgeot EX. Beautiful art on the Pidgeot. I've, I've said it before, but I'm a huge fan. Go to Altaria. If I have it. I do. Okay. I should have checked if I had Altaria in the first place. Still, Pidgeot EX is going to be good. Now, there's no retreat cost there. We're going to Tempting Tune. Allow us to pick up an Iono. Yeah, I don't want to waste it on Arvin. I need cards in hand. Oh, that's right. It puts it to the top. I thought I put it into your hand. Yeah. So I might, I might pull the Altaria from this deck. That's good for setting up, but I was predicting that it would be extra card potential. Okay, I, I'm going to pull the Altaria from this deck. DTE? If it's DTE, we'll move the Pidgeot EX up. Fortunately, since we have Pidgeot EX, we can do a good search. But, oh my goodness, I forgot that aspect of Altaria. Oh, Galarian Rapidash V. That's not a card you see too often. Okay, and there's the old cemetery. Hopefully we can pull something. You know, Eno's a good card for control, but it's a tough card to call if you want to use it or not. Because, yeah, I just gave my opponent some really good advantage. Okay, uh, so we can evolve to Garchomp EX fairly nice right there. And we deal 160, so what we're going to do is we're going to quick search, pull up a fighting energy. Right here. Now, we are going to get pinged for 20 damage, which is unfortunate. But it's a, it's a setup. Uh, we're going to retreat. Now, this is a nice situation. We'll Tempting Tune to pick up... We'll dump Arvin? Yeah, we'll dump Arvin on the bench. And we're just going to Hydro Lander. Unfortunately, we don't have any targets in our discard. But this was a pretty good Hydro Lander. Take a prize. And there's a Pidgeotto. We don't really need Pidgeotto, but it's an option. I think Featherball is definitely one of the more interesting items. As an antithesis to Heavy Ball, which typically targets Pokemon for retreat cost of three, I believe. I haven't seen Heavy Ball in for a while. But, uh, getting no retreat cost is interesting because retreat cost of none is always really good. Just making their moves. I mean, I think the, uh, Rugged Helmet is pretty, pretty nice there. I would, I'd personally be going for uh, Rocky Helmet. No, they get the setup. Let's see what they do. Painful Spoons to spread some damage. Okay. But, uh... The Libra Horn's all right, but it's not going to work how it's intending. If I can actually get the Paldean Tauros, that's not terrible. It'll be on par with its typical damage. It'll be an option opposed to 
their raging horns. Okay. So yeah, he just places that on. Unfortunate. Arvin's a nice pool right there. I mean, I know I forced it. I don't know where I want to call. We'll use the Fetter Ball to spin out the deck. Pidgeot EX. Well, okay. First, we're going to Arvin. This is going to allow us to pick up our Tool Jammer, which is super nice. And I'm thinking... Let's Ultra Ball, actually. We can pull something small out. I think this is a hard once per turn. Yeah, it's a hard once per turn. I start, I want to start getting a second Guard Chomp going. So we're going to attach Tool Jammer here. We're going to dump here and here. Pick up a Gibble. I mean, all things considered, I'm, I'm not opposed to the birds. It's pretty... Decent. I like it. We'll set up a fighting energy onto the Gibble right here. And he's got to take some damage from the old cemetery, but it's can't be avoided. Well, Tempting Tune. Tough call. Uh, I think I want boss's orders in hand because I could see them playing a defensive mover and trying to retreat next turn. But yeah, we're just gonna hydro ladder right now. And thankfully that's not coming back to hand. They're gonna be able to psychic for 90. So the best move is to move up with Lunala. In order to get the kill onto the guard shop. And he's got psychic spoons. Probably move guard chomps to the gibble. Yeah. Yep, that's it. And then he'll retreat into the Lanala, but he doesn't have the energies. He needs a DT. He has the DT. Okay, he did get that. Yeah, Pokemon with zero retreat costs is not very common. I mean, you see it with the babies, but it's you, you you don't see it too often i guess is the way i'm trying to put it okay yep they go for the treat they're gonna lunar pain take out the guard chomp unfortunate i should have picked up uh the arvin but it's not gonna happen and that's gonna be a triple prize cards for them which is pretty good it's going to be rough to come back from. Okay, we're going to move up Altaria. Boss's orders up the Rapidash. Because maybe I can get something going. We're going to... I mean, I know I'm only running you two Iona, but one as a prize card is kind of... Uh, I got a super rod. Yeah, pick up the two gibbles and we'll pick up guard chomp. Why not? Tempting tune with the Altaria. We'll Arvin. And we're just going to end turn. I don't think Altaria is that guy. We're going to have to remove him for some more supporters to make him consistent. I think we're running like 29 supporters. I'd like some more. And the problem with this deck is it's... The Energy Accelerator is the Guard Chomp. I had a complete miss with the Guard Chomp on the Energy Acceleration, so... Okay, just a Pidgeot. We got Arvin... Pick up a TM Evolution and let's pick up a Rare Candy. Do I not have Ultra Balls? Oh no, I've used all three. Wow. Well, I need an energy. This is tough. I, I'm not sure on where to go. I think I'm going to concede on this.
yeah i'm just gonna concede i think the game wasn't forfeit at that point but he's gonna be able to get some good damage out and i wouldn't be able to re recover as fast i think i need to apply some aspects to make the deck more consistent so let's go back in take a look and we're just gonna take out the swablu altaria that's it's not doing what i really wanted instead we're gonna replace it for greninja the radiant i mean yeah you see it in a lot of decks but there's a reason it's good radiant greninja is gonna allow us to discard the energy which is good we need to keep our fighting types there and i don't mind having the squawk ability keeping a one copy of pidgeotto and a one of gabites not terrible as well uh i think we're gonna pump up to 10 just to make that a bit more consistent and we're gonna run a double research because we're low on draw power we'll run a uh, turo and sada but the draw is not there uh we also don't really need to ultra ball all things considered i'd rather take nest ball yeah uh this this isn't bad let's try it out i'm taking a look right now at some of the pokemon that do have no retreat costs and they're interesting it, it was the the nest ball that got me thinking about what pokemon have no retreat cost and then i looked it up and i saw the guard chomp so that inspired me to make the video now uh mousehold ex also doesn't have any retreat which is interesting baby pokemon don't have retreat costs so elekid mantike magby uh the bonsley those guys right now nimble doesn't have one but nimble's not really a great target go first yeah i'd love to go first thank you mew ex doesn't have it so it's a decent target for draw if i'm on low cards in hand uh Ridge Rock as an opener is not what I really wanted to see. The battle VIP pass is nice. I mean if I get the fighting energy, Regigate isn't a terrible option. Looks like we're playing against a Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Okay, single gibble, set up a Pidgey. And this is actually quite atrocious. I can't take the squawk ability. Because both Pidgeot and both Super Rod are in my hand. So I will no longer have any means of getting Pidgeot EX onto the field. So we're just going to double set up with Greninja. We'll dump the Tool Jammer and end turn. This is, this is unfortunate. I also don't intend with opening on someone like Regirock. So I don't run Switch. Because all no retreat costs. But the Turo is going to allow us to bypass that if it's not in the price cards. So in 151, the cards that seem to have no retreat costs, there's a good amount that have no retreat costs. There's the uh, Pidgeot from 151. Pidgeot EX here is from Obsidian Flames. But if you want to pair Pidgeot Pidgeot, you could. It's not really the great option. If you're running Pidgeot, you might as well just run EX. Consistency sick. The Raticate there, it has no retreat cost. And that one's not terrible. It's 30 plus 30 for each damage counter on your opponent's active Pokemon. So let's run DTE on it, for example. So it's going to have a base damage of 10, right? Now, for every damage counter on your opponent, that's an additional 30. So let's say they have 20 on it from... Uh, the Radiant Alakazam, just as an example, right? Well, you're getting the base 10 because of the DTE. Oh, it's our turn. Then you're having 20 that rounds up to 30. Then you're going to have an additional couple 30. Well, Pokestop, unfortunate hits, man. That that sucks. We're going to end turn. Uh, Raticate's a Pokemon I'm very interested in. I would consider using a uh, combo water eradicate deck because that way you can use the Greninja to amplify damage using the 90 and at 90 it's a pretty much sure kill 
Because that's going to be an additional 280 with a DTE to eradicate. So that's a total free 70. You get into really interesting math with the eradicate. At the 8, you're looking at... And I'm going to apply DTE, so base 10 damage. Right? Because that's going to be a super easy cheat out. However, you can get an additional 20 damage. Hmm. I might consider this deck. I might run it with Bax Caliber to ramp up water energy onto him. And Greninja for a ping. And some other ping option. Just to move the bench around. But I, I like this Raticate idea. The Fear out there is alright. You gotta search your deck for free cards and put them in your hand. But that's your move for the turn. If you're not doing damage, it's not crazy. Gengar is interesting. It's got no retreat cost. And Hollow Dive's actually a decent option in all consideration. Okay, so yeah, and no, they don't ramp up the uh, guard chomp for an easy ping. Interesting. This is interesting. We've had a really bad hand. Fortunately, he's gone now, so hopefully we pull something. If I get an energy, that'd be nice. Ah, uh, Arvin. I can work with Arvin. I can work with Arvin. We're going to pick up a rare candy and a... Tough call. I'm going to tool jammer. All right. Are you going to go Pidgeot on the bench? We'll attach the tool jammer there. All right. Now we're going to pick up for Eono. Pretty decent enough hand. I can't really complain. Oh, shoot. That's right. We played our Arvin for the turn. Ah, you know what? Iono's fine. I, I'm happy with it. Okay. Nasty hits. At least an energy's in the trash. There's nothing I really want to super rot at this point. Maybe the Tauros. Where's going to end turn? So Gengar from 151 has two moves. Poltergeist, which is 50 times the amount of trainers in your opponent's hand. Which is interesting. You typically get a lot of trainers in your hand. Like right now, I'm at four trainers. So I'd be taking a nasty 200 right there. Uh, we're going to move up to Pidgeot. It's an easier treat. Uh, we'll Nest Ball. We will not Nest Ball. Will Yono shut down their hand a bit? Hopefully, we can pull the guard chomp and a fighting energy. Beautiful, beautiful right there. Okay, we're gonna gibble here. We're gonna concealed cards. Uh, I'm gonna take out the Arter Zone because I just don't want him having it. We're gonna quick search. Pick up uh. Do I got rare candy? No. Okay. Just got to make sure before I actually click buttons. Are you evolve here? Retreat. And... I'm just going to Artisan to peak. I don't think I have any targets. Yeah, they're both gone. So, we're going to Hydro Lander. We're going to target the Pidgeot EX. It's an, uh, it's an attack. We got moves for next turn. But yeah, Poltergeist is interesting. And there's decks that work with it. Like Shuppet EX. Which prevents your opponent from using trainers or items. Something like that. And Hollow Dive. Which is Psychic. Colorless. 110. Put free damage counters on your opponent's bench Pokemon in any way you like. That's not terrible for... Uh, the... What's it called? Sa uh, Roaring Moon. I always want to call it Salamance. But it's not terrible for the Roaring Moon EX. For the consideration that if you can remove the item, you can bounce the Roaring Moon EX to the bench, get a safe 110 on something, and get an easy kill. 
So the boss's orders in this situation is nice because if he does decide to retreat, we can pull up the guard chomp and get an easy kill. So it's a combo with Chan Pao. Interesting. Yeah, he's going to do some good damage with the origin form Polkia, but we're just going to... Oh, 200. Wow. Wow. We're going to take the guard chomp EX as a kill, though. Because we need that. The 120 ping is not going to be sufficient enough. Uh, quick search. We're going to pick up Super Rod, actually. I need something to manage the bench. Pick up you, you, and we'll set up one of you. Right. Now we're going to Artazone. Aldean Tauros is our target of choice. Nest Ball just to fin out the hand because I honestly don't need it. We're going to raid in Greninja because this is how fighting energy is getting attached anyways. If I can pull another fighting energy like I just did, that's an optimal situation for the Peldean Tauros. So we're just going to Hydro Lander. Ramp on our energy. We're going to need one more to get a successful hit, but we have options. We're only halfway for our energy tanking. Okay, pull this up. Uh, Evolution Gibble. Gibble's not a terrible option, but it's a little late for this. The Polk is just going to be able to do some good damage. Oh. Taking a look in 151, there's also Cypher, 70 HP. Uh, it's got a little bit of Grass Ramp, and, but it's it's not crazy. I think, honestly, it's a good option going into Cleavor Scizor. Which is really a good Pokemon at this point. And if you're running a grass deck, it's worth to run a couple steel energy for Cleavor Scizor. And then run Cypher as well. Okay. Yeah, there he goes. He can't one tap my Pidgeot EX. So while we bank on getting some stuff, what we're going to do. Is we're going to go here, here, Regiono right here. Now the Chan Pao is actually scary. So Tiziano was a really good call. Uh, cool. Well, quick search here. I just have a research. That's unfortunate. And we're going to path to the peak. Now, this is going to shut down our Pidgeot, but it's also going to shut down his Chien Pao and his Greninja, which is going to be huge in our scenario. We don't really need to set that up. We're just going to attack with Blastery Wind. We don't have to discard the stadium. No. So that's why I'm running copy of Path to Peak. And path to Peak's a good shutdown option. We'll be able to tank the kill on the Pidgeot. Taking a look, there's Jolteon, which from 151 has two moves. Linear attack is a 30 ping. It's it's not crazy. But for an electric and double colorless, you can do 90. And if your opponent's Pokemon is EX or V, you do 180 instead, which isn't bad. Especially if you're running a EV deck. There's there's a lot of options you can go into that. So he decides to make the retreat. Goes into the Burn Ninja. He's gonna kill the Gibble. Which puts us in a tricky situation. Because now we have to go in kill with our pal. No! I'm not well, get the damage on Pidgeot X. I thought he would have gone for Paldea and Tauros. Now we have to go in, kill the Radiant Greninja with our Paldean Tauros, because our Pidgeot EX is not going to do it. And then he's going to be able to easily revenge kill the Palkia. So this is a tricky situation. And ultimately, he's going to take game because of it, because we just can't manage against that. We're going to Arvin. There's nothing great here, if I'm being honest. We'll just pick up a Nest Ball Choice Belt. 
we'll give him the choice belt just to have it and end turn by uh taking a greninja unfortunate but that's uh that's what happens boss's orders there Aerodactyl from 151 also has no retreat cost and the de-evolution ray actually can be very impactful by the aspect of how do I put it uh you're reducing your opponent's overall HP and certain Pokemon won't be able to survive that matchup and the evolution EX format you're not going to be getting that extra prize card but that is a super hurting kill 100 damage right and consider that Gabite has 100 health. So you don't need to kill Garchomp EX. You need to kill Gabite. And that's very reasonable with the Aerodactyl. Okay, so we had a couple of unfortunate matches. I think I just got to run one more of this Garchomp EX. There, there's, a, there's something there. I know there is. But we just... That, that was a super unfortunate. We had to play super slow last turn or last game. EX, that is a zero tree cost, a lot like his brother in Mew V Max and V. Babies, Crobat from uh, Paradox Rift has no retreat cost. Crobat typically doesn't. No retreat cost typically is associated with Pokemon that have high speed. And birds tend to have high speed, Garchomp has high speed. Okay, opponent's going first. Let's see what they run. Marco 96. Uh, I'm happy with this opener. Happy enough, I guess. I mean, I, I'm not opening up with Reggie Gigas. I kind of want to run some more Gibbles. Let's see. What else has no retreat cost? Cluffa has none. Again, it's a baby. Wynoon from Obsidian Flames doesn't. That's interesting. Uh, and it's got some decent power. It's always a... Oh! Shadow Rider Calyrex VMAX. Interesting. You don't see that one too often. Especially in today's meta. It's such an easy kill. There's Mewtwo. Maybe he's pairing it with Terra Mewtwo EX. Rhydon EX and Palmod EX both have no uh, retreat cost. The ones from uh, Obsidian Flames. Turo's not terrible in this situation. I don't want to dump a Tool Jammer just yet. I think we're going to have hard play path to the peak. Yono. Hopefully pick up a Battle VIP pass. I haven't seen it. I mean, where are my battle VIP passes? I've not seen them. Okay, we're getting Nest Ball. We're going to pick up Squawkabilly right here, right? We're going to have Fighting Energy on Gibble. TM Evolution. Uh, I forgot that I have Path to the Peak out. Unfortunate. But we're going to evolve into Pidgey and the Gibble right here. Okay, Pidgey has no targets. Unfortunate. Oh, no, the Pidgey does. That's a weird way of doing it. But, uh, yeah. Uh, ultimately, that's a fine opener. Noivern EX from Paldea Evolved has no tree cost. That makes it a decent target. Uh, it's It's got some good moves. It's not high damaging, but it's very disruptive to an opponent's game plan. Kilowattrol is running... Nothing crazy, but that's from Paradox or Powdea Pal Evolved. No retreat cost. Palmot, no retreat cost. Pikachu EX. Sizzlezar. Esparfa from Scarlet Violet has no retreat cost, as well as the promo, which is not bad. Palmot has none. Zero or V Star. Yeah, the Pokemon of no retreat cost tend to not be crazy. It's all speed of less power than ideal. So, Better Ball hasn't been a crazy target. But I think in the right decks, it can definitely put in some work. 
So, okay, it looks like they're also pairing with uh, Alakazam EX, which is interesting. Hopefully we get a good pull. I mean, I know I'm running a couple of Yonos, a couple of research. If anything, we'll get some attacks in. Okay, they run Path to the Peak for Old Cemetery. That works out uh, not great for us. I could have used the Squawk really last turn, but it's all right. It happens. Switching to Mewtwo, Reflexive Barrier. We're not weak to Psychic, we're weak to Grass, which is nice. Grass having double advantage is pretty good, but it's on half of the... Oh, we'll switch out to Artizone. Now, we're not actually going to attack with Bite here because that's going to put an extra 20 on us and we're going to be primed to kill with Reflexive Barrier the next turn. If he wants to kill this Gibble, he's going to have to Silash, which will discard two Psychic Energies. So, the best move is to not make a move. I have Pokemon that can easily kill this Mewtwo. The only thing that I'd like to do with killing it is that dealing 20 damage to this Mewtwo would establish it up. Oh, there's the Calyrex VMAX. And there's a rare candy. But it would prime up a bench kill with the Gabite or the Garchomp. Yeah. That's where I've seen the ability before. The new Zatu Natu is a non VMAX version of Calyrex Shadow Rider. Except it doesn't have to target a psychic Pokemon. So it's it's better in all manners except for attacking. But if you're using it for support, like you're gonna be doing with Calyrex Shadow Rider, then that's really good. The squawk ability I do need to pick up with a Turo. I, I need to get something, man. There's the Earthen Vessel. Okay. Interesting play. It is going to prime him up next turn for a kill of Alakazam. No, he didn't even attach from energy this turn. He's going to be able to kill. Without the negative side effect of the Mewtwo. It's, it's an interesting mechanic. Uh, I'm in a rough area right now. I'm going to be honest. We'll move up this Pidgey. If we go Pidgeot EX, we can rare candy. Don't get it. Unfortunate. I don't know why the deck's just not going consistent. I thought I had means of getting it consistent, but it's not going. But I mean, it's close. Closely a parallel to Charizard EX. Oh, there's the boss's orders. Bring up the Gabite. We're going to concede right here. This music is just how I feel. It's sad. It sucks. And I had a play and I, I messed it up. It's, it's my fault. It really is my fault. And I'm sorry about that, guys. I think I'm going to try one more time. I think there's one more in me I can do. I've been playing some matches in my free time just to try out some decks, see what I'm feeling. And I, I, I have been doing good. I've been at 200 for a while. I've been super unlucky. Uh, there's a gotcha game I play, Fire Emblem Heroes. My luck has been atrocious in that. Uh, I mean, I'm, it's not like I'm running terrible decks either. I'm trying to do some good stuff. Okay, no hits on my opening, which is crazy because I got a good amount of basic Pokemon in there. I should at least hit on my opener. I mean, I get it. I get it's non-zero, but unless I'm running all basic Pokemon in my deck, it is non-zero. Okay. Finish, finish making your move, dude. There's, there's not much. Two. Oh, good heavens. 
and a Greninja. We can Artizone on our opener and then run research. Artizone will pick up something. Gibble, Choice Belt. Uh, we got Battle VIP Pass. At least that's something. Lost Box. Whoopee. So we're in a tricky situation now with Lost Box. We get some easy pings. I think it's 120 damage he divides up. But Lost Box is fast, man. We'll see what their opener is going to respond with if we want a Yono or research. With this hand I have right now, I'm not upset if I research. So if he's low in cards in the hand, I'll research. But if he's going to end high, we're going to Yono. Okay, okay. There's the Ultra Ball. Okay, cross at your grass energy. Interesting. So the grass energy. My first thought is Pinsir 151. No, he goes for Luminion. So he's going to pick a supporter to his hand. He has to reveal it, I believe, because how do I know it's a supporter he draws, you know? So with that mechanic, I might pull wrist. There's the cold wrist. Uh. Or it's a 6-6 six to six exchange at this moment. I'm going to Yono just to remove the possibility of a chorus. I mean, he's got good potential to redraw. There's a Psychic Energy. Retreat, go into Comb Fey. Allow an additional card into hand. Another Banish. Oh, good heavens. Flower Selecting. Yep, draw your card. Hard Pick. Since it's a hard pick, I'm going to be more inclined to Yono. Cross Switcher. Okay. So he's given up the Cross Switcher mechanic, which is nice on our end. There's the Sableye. Yeah. Well, Paldean, Tauros. I don't really want to give him an Artizone, but uh, I think it's our best move right here. We're just going to Gibble Pidgey. Nest Ball. We'll uh, Squawkabelly Pidgey. We'll run this right here. We're going to... We're going to Yono. We have the Squawkabilly. And it reduces the odds of pulling something good. Uh, we'll attach the tool jammer here. We'll attach the technical machine. If it gets used, this it's got to get used this turn. And I think I'll attach the fighting energy here. A rare candy's not terrible. I'll pick a, a second gibble. Just to prepare ourselves. The fighting energy is fine. And ultimately, uh, let's let's concealed cards. Perhaps we could draw something good. Okay, I'm not opposed to this. Uh, we'll just run TM Evolution at this point. Pick up you and you, hopefully. So we don't have Pidgeotto in the deck. But we do have Digabyte. So the rare candy has a decent target if we're able to pull it next turn. I'd even consider running Evolution again if I'm four in hand. I mean, the Evolution's going to go because I'm most likely going to research next turn. So my presumption to do is attach the Evolution to the Greninja anyhow. Because I'll either evolve or I'll retreat and attack. He brings out the Giratina V. Interesting. So it is a Giratina V star variation of the deck. I mean, Lost Zone is such a good engine. We have nothing that gets one-tapped by the Sableye. 
And with Turo, I feel a bit more confident. Ideally, I leave Squawkabilly out to be easy bait for the Sableye. Then I'll Turo to pick him up. So here comes the Comfey. He's probably fishing for a Colrus. Okay. Haas is an Ultra Ball. Super quick. Beach Court. Interesting maneuver. Who does he retreat into? The Cramorant? I see. Yes. Get the attack going. No, he runs Switch. I believe... Oh, I, pres I presume he already has retreated. But he'll spit innocently. Okay. Nest Ball. Unfortunate. Nothing to do there. We'll attach the fighting energy here. We'll attach this here here and there's honestly no need to path to the peak at this moment or we'll research better ball works out in our favor we'll go guard chomp and next turn we'll be able to arvin but uh we'll retreat We're getting concealed cards. Okay, there's the Turo. It's a tricky question of do I Arvin or do I Turo next turn? We'll see. We'll see what we want to do. I consider it to pick up the Greninja. But uh, let's just Hydro Lancer. Easy kill. Ah, tough call. I'm going to... Establish a minimum of one onto the Gibble. We'll be fine without a secondary. And we'll establish one onto the Tauros. Tauros is my second choice of attack. I mean, I would also consider running more water. But due to the profound electric weakness, I am concerned. And I run a couple little fighting. Pokemon. Guard Chomp EX and Hands, nice. I think my move, as much as I want a Turo here, I don't think he has the setup just yet. If he goes 1, 2, 3, and that, he would need a Chorus Experiment, a Third Comfey, and a Lost Vacuum to really get it going. I think what I'll do is I'll Arvin to pick up a Rare Candy, Evolve Pidgeot, EX from the Pidgey, pick up a Rare Candy, Evolve into Guard Chomp, and if we lose the Greninja, we lose the Greninja. I think I'm fine in that exchange. We'll set up the Tool Jammer onto the Gibble, due to not really having another decent target at this point. There's the Lost Vacuum. He's going to hit probably my Choice Belt, if I was to make a presumption. I mean, it's the most logical move to make, hit the Choice Belt. He might go for a Beach Court to increase his uh, hard count, but... Uh, the best move to make would have been the, uh, the choice belt. Because now I'm not going to one-tap the Luminion. He has the setup for Mirage Gate, I think is the move. There's the Comfey. He Fordens. Interesting. Brings out the Cramorants. That's an interesting use of Fordham. Oh. Peculiar. I think you're going to see a lot more Fordham in the evolving meta. It's a card I definitely passed on in the past. But uh, with some strong basics and energy ramp not crazy at this point. There's options. There's options I needed. Okay. It's a tough call on what to do. We're going to... Mm, we're going to play the Arvin route. Pick up a rare candy. 
Go into Pidgey Yacht EX. We're going to dump Tool Jammer here. We're going to quick search. Pick up the rare candy. Go to Garchomp EX. We're in a fairly good situation. We're going to keep Turo. I ideally want to bait out the Squawkabilly EX with some damage counters. We'll run concealed cards. Uh, ultimately, this isn't terrible. I think... Do I have a second Pidgey on EX? No. We'll Feather Ball to thin out the deck. Pulling this. Taking a look. I got two Battle VIP, two Feather Ball, two Nest Ball. Nothing crazy. The Fighting Energy is going to be some good hits. That's necessary towards this late game. But where we don't have that, it's a tough call. Uh, I want to remove the retreat for free aspect. And yeah, let's just Hydro Lander. Mm, tough call. I think what I'll do is I'll... Caldean Tauros, the Psychic Energy. Take our prize card. We'll go number four. Boss's Orders is a good card. I'm. It's tricky to tell what I want to do next turn. I'm still idealizing the Turo. I don't want a Yono. I don't need an Arvin. So it's a Turo versus Boss's Orders, truly. There's the Comfe. I think that was a Garatina V he just banished. Yes. Eight and trash. He can Mirage Gate the Comfe Garantina to get the energy out to retreat. That'd be my presumption right there, unless he's got a beach court on hand. Basic grass energy from hand. Retreat into the comb phase. Search for a Mirage Gate. Protect your Garatina V star or V for as much as possible. That'd be my prediction. Ah, I forgot Gar Garatina V ran grass psychic energy. Artisan, search for another comb fay, I presume. I mean, I would have done that first to fin out the deck to get a better hit. Oh, he goes for another cram. Interesting. I might boss his orders here. Let's see, he's already used a retreat. He needs some sort of switch, and he's used the energy from his hand, so he needs a switch Mirage Gate. Two specific cards. He escape ropes, which I'm not scared about. I think I'm gonna put up the Haldane Tauros. We have the means to retreat if necessary. I can recycle the energy if he doesn't attack. If he gets me with the Cramorant, that's going to be an easy revenge kill. I don't need the energy. If he gets me to Garatina V, okay. He brings up the Sableye. Does he have the cards in Banish? He doesn't, but he's going to... He's He needs one more. He's going to Mirage Gate. I'm uncertain on where he wants to go with the Sableye. I'm really hoping he's going to go with Squawkabilly. Maybe add a single one with Garchomp. Let's see. What do you do? What do you do, bud? Because he doesn't have the 10. If my Greninja goes, then... Yeah, I think he just realized he doesn't have the 10. Or he thought that the 10 was total. Yeah, he only scratches. Uh, we're going to retreat, run into the Garchomp here, we'll dump this right here, and we're just going to Turo to make, nah, oh, it's a tough call, because now he has a double with the Tauros Greninja combo. I think the combo here is we're going to actually pick up Tauros. 
Because if I pick up the Greninja, he could just prime the Tauros, or he could prime, kill the Tauros, prime the Greninja. So I'm actually going to do the Antithesis. Oh, good heavens. I don't want the Squawkabilly EX biting me. Because I know it will. I know it will. I have a chance with these guys right here. The Squawkabilly will bite me in the end. And he's going to be able to do... There's a 20 there. And a 90. He's going to be able to get the kill on double. I think we're fine. We're going to ramp up energy. Hydro laser. Get the kill. Maybe we can tank it. Put this here. We're going to double down. Here. Yes. Next turn, we can boss his orders into something like uh, Luminion. Play defensively. Take out a Pokemon like Cramorant. I mean, it's a lost box, so he does have a lot of switching potential. But the Turo, I do believe, is going to help in the endgame. There comes the Comfey. We got a really good advantage on lead. The problem is that uh, it's going to be tricky once the Giratina V-Star starts arriving. What did he dump? He dumped a supporter. Boss's orders. Interesting. Comes for the Colrus' experiment to get the draw. Makes sense. Let's see what he pulls. Cross switcher in the final comb fay. Does he have the V-Star is the question. Does he have the energy is the question. There's a lot of questions. 280 is going to be killing. Okay, does he have Mirage Gate then? Energy Recycler, perhaps? Because two is not enough to take it with Giratina V. At least he's going for the insta kill move. But why waste out on my fresh one? Or why waste out on the damaged one when it would be more optimal for the fresh one? Yeah, he goes V Star. Does he have Mirage Gate? That's the question. He does, he does. Okay. So let's see where he places the energy. Honestly, his best move is to place the second energy onto the Luminion. Except he doesn't have it. Interesting. There's a question of what's my best moves in terms... No, he's... What? He's Star Requiems. Why insta-kill? Why? I'm confused. But what about the guard chomp? Oh, good heavens. Uh, it's a tough call to know what to do. I'm going to pitch a Yacht EX just to search what I have left in my deck. Uh, Super Rod's not a terrible option. We're going to pull that. Super Rod, pick up the Gibble, Garchomp, and... Sure, we'll could bite. Why not? Go Gibble. Next turn, we can Nest Ball. Uh, do I want to attack? Sack the Garchomp EX? Oh, that's tough. I think, ultimately, I'm going to have to play defensively in this maneuver. And... I think he's... I'm taking a... Mm. I would take a gamble that he's out of energy. But with the Garchomp EX and his Sonic Dive, we could be primed in order to get a revenge kill for our next Garchomp EX. Because we're pretty set. Plus, we don't, or we won't even be insta killed, but this is gonna prime us to get a kill on the next turn. We'll be able to switch into our Gibble with full health.
Okay. Let's see what he does. Let's see what he does. He runs Switch. I thought he would have that. That's why I decided to attack the Garatina. I would have really loved to take the extra prize card on the Cramorant. No, he goes for Comfey with Flower Selecting. Interesting. Uh, I think with the art, I I have a good amount of cards in hand. I don't have to worry about decking out. What I'll do next turn is if he doesn't switch into Garatina. Okay, there comes the Beach Court. So he is going to switch in. So he must have had that in his hand. What we're going to do is we're going to use Arvin to search out a Feather Ball, which will allow us to pick up the Garatina. Not the Garatina, but the Garchomp EX. Rare Candy into it. Okay, here comes the Lost Impact. Gardenia's Vigor. Interesting maneuver. But we can pick up a Fighting Energy, which is nice. It'll prime us decently well with Garchomp EX on the next turn. But I think we have game at this point. Okay, the fighting energy's there. So we're just gonna... We're gonna Pidgeot EX. We don't really need anything specific. I want to play a bit more safe though. And if it does come to a deck out situation... I want to have more cards in my hand to Yono with. In fact, I'm considering Yonoing right now since I have such a good draw power. Uh, yeah, we'll set this up. We'll treat, go to guard shop here, get our kill. I want to shut him down a little bit. I don't want to give him too many cards in hand. So we're going to Arvin. Or we're getting Yono. Yeah, we're getting only at three, but we have really good draw. Uh, double Feather Ball, Nest Ball, not terrible. But let's just Hydro Ladder. It'd be good to have our Water Energies for a situation like the Radiant Greninja at this point. But we don't. Yeah, so there's Arvin, there's Pidgeotto. The best move he could make is move into Luminion. Now, he might retreat into it, but we don't have an insta-kill into Luminion. However, we did have the bench kill. If he had something like a mana fee, that would be his final bit of protection. He doesn't. We took the game. So, finally took a game. Thankful on that end. That was Garchomp EX. If you have a suggestion on how to run it better, I would appreciate your commentary on that. I saw, I, I wasn't even considering running with uh, Pidgeot EX initially, but seeing the double effect of no retreat cost, no retreat cost, I thought it was too cool of a gimmick to pass up. Again, if you have any suggestions on how you'd run a deck, please let me know. I'd love to hear it. And as always, I hope you have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.